Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, I am joined by um, a really awesome, awesome guy, and we're going to be talking about NLP. We're going He's going to teach us a technique. He's going to talk about how we might be able to use it uh, as hypnotists. And um, if you're watching this uh, within the group, the Facebook group, Launch Your Hypnosis Career Now, awesome. Thanks for being there. If you're sort of a, uh, a wannabe hypnotist and you're watching this on YouTube uh, later on my, my blog or something, please join the group. I'll put the link uh, in the video and, and, uh, and in the comments. It's just facebook.com slash launch your hypnosis career now. Everyone, please welcome Bill Thomason. Hey, Bill. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. You know what? I was going to read off. Um, uh, oh, and by the way, I'm Jim Kellner, everyone. I'm a uh, stage and uh, and uh, I'm a stage hypnotist, hypnotherapist, and I always like to chat with with other um, you know kind of uh, hypnotists and NLP practitioners and anybody that has to do with with um, helping us to live a better life. Um, Bill, I was going to uh, read off your credentials, your your stuff, but I'm going to let you handle it because you got a lot. Well, the simple thing is I'm an uh, NLP executive coach and uh, an NLP master trainer. I've been doing this for 30 years, close to 35, and started out way back when with Anthony Robbins. I had gone to a seminar. We were doing lots of seminars in those days, and I finally asked my girlfriend, well, what's this seminar we're going to be doing? She says, we're going to walk on fire. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are we going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, about 35 minutes in, it was a four-day seminar, and it was the first evening, and you actually get prepared and walk on fire with Tony Robbins the first night in those days. We call it the fire walk experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, 35 minutes in, I realized this is exactly what I'd been looking for. My background was in nutritional medicine. I owned a health food store. I traveled all over the Southwest selling nutritional medicine products to doc to first health food stores and then switched into the uh, nutritional medicine field with doctors. So the whole idea of understanding the connection between mind and body uh, from uh, uh, books I had read and people I had met in that field, I knew that uh, just dealing with the physical body alone wasn't going to get the kinds of change I was actually looking for in the world. So uh, I was looking for, well, how do you facilitate people at the emotional and spiritual levels in addition to the physical level? And NLP, uh, I found out, had exactly what I've been looking for in terms of specific tools and patterns you can use that will actually change the way people are operating in their lives, actually change behavior. Uh, you know, eventually I did a lot of corporate training and figured out that people talk about change all the time oh, yeah. <laughs> and very few people actually do it or know how to do it. So sometimes how to is the thing that'll make the big difference. So after doing some training, I got my little manual I had and I took a, a page, I turned the pages and hold them up in front of me and I ask all my friends, well, have you got a minute? Have you got five or 10 minutes? What would you like to have different and better in your life? We can help you make some changes. So <laughs> I do these little patterns and I'd read it off step yeah. by step by step by step. And sure enough, they, yeah. uh, they pretty much always worked. So I kept on doing it, studying with everybody I could study with. One of the two co-founders of NLP is Richard Bandler. He was actually teaching the hypnosis segment of my NLP practitioner training wow. Training with Anthony Robbins back in those days. We were in Palm Desert, California. Uh, kind of the first year, or second year that the, the Waterscape Marriott that's there in the middle of the desert <laughs> had been opened and we walked on fire, we jumped off a 50-foot telephone pole onto trapezes, we did ropes courses where we came over walls and you learned how to find your own strategy for being individually successful, but also uh, successful as a team. So all of that kind of studied over years and years. It's just such a big toolbox. There's just always something you're going to learn and uh, be able to pay attention to with NLP. If you've taken hypnosis training, <clears throat> pretty much for sure you've gotten a lot of NLP. 
because <laughs> it's you just start you're not going to find an, a hypnosis course that isn't uh full of nlp and we consider hypnosis to be one of the four cornerstones of what nlp is so that gives you some background about what we're talking about and with the amount of time we've got here today i uh told jim i would uh do probably my, my one of my favorite uh introductory NLP patterns, I call it build unlimited ability. Now, NLP is based on the idea that if anybody can do anything really well, they're experts at whatever thing they might be expert in, and you can get enough high quality information about how they do what they do well, then I can uh, integrate those patterns for myself. I can also install them in others. So NLP is actually based on that foundation. We just are looking for excellence wherever we find it. In fact, that's a really great question. And I'll be pretty much got developed on was excellence. With the build unlimited ability pattern, if you are thinking or can think of something that would be like a limitation for you, something you don't do as well as what you would like to do, uh, uh, kind of limitation in your ability. Uh, would be a good way to think about it. Uh, so uh, I'm going to kind of go by the pattern that's in the book, although uh, you've identified something you can think of. If you're just thinking of something or a lot of different situations as like a group of things that are kind of meeting this criteria of an ability you're not very good of, or even a situ, it's better you find a situation where it didn't go the way you would have liked it to, a specific moment in time, because if it's too general, then it, the pattern is not going to work as well. If we can get a specific example, then it will generalize back out other uh, contexts in your life, other situations. Pick something specific. So uh, everybody feel like they've got something they can work with. Uh, I don't. I can't actually get your feedback on the, the way this is set up, but uh, uh, be looking for whatever it is. Uh, and if you think of someone, since we're looking at what mentors are, people you'd like to get excellent behavior from, it could be a movie star, it could be a teacher, it could be mom, dad, or just anybody you can think of. Uh, who does it better than you? I'll give you a little example of a, a time I ran this pattern with a guy in coaching. He uh, was a massage therapist, and he worked in one of those little places where there are several massage therapists, and he, was, he had somebody in the uh, shop he worked in who seemed to get return clients. People loved him. He made a lot more money than my, uh, cl my client did, and uh, he just felt like he what he was sort of failing as a, a massage therapist. He knew he did pretty good work, but he couldn't. He wasn't communicating in a way with his clients uh, to ex ex express fully what would have them come back and recommend him and all of that. So we ran this pattern with him. And so what it is is you remember this specific time. For him, what happened was. We ran this little pattern and he went, I'll give you the end of it right now, because after we just did, you know, a simple little pattern that we took 15 minutes to do, uh, he went back in two weeks later, he came back and he was getting the kinds of results the other guy had been getting as well as he did. The whole shop was actually making way more money than it was before. Mm -hmm. So build unlimited ability. You have the ability to actually make pictures in your head. So when I ask you to think of something that was a limitation in your ability and you thought of a specific moment when, uh, you may notice that a picture, like a movie, ran in your head. Mm. So you ran that movie from the beginning through some kind of middle all the way to some kind of end. And if, you, if I get this right, I'll suggest that as you get to the end of the movie again, as we're talking about it now, you're going to be there standing on the last frame of that movie. Uh, and as you do stand there on the last frame of that movie, what we're going to do is just add resources because the basic formula for change work in NLP, you start with a like a problem state and you want to go to uh, see if I can get my hands to <laughs> show up. <laughs> I don't think they're going to. But you go from the problem state, you want to get to a desired state. What you do in between those two things is you just add resources. 
So the resource I'm going to have you add is in there at the end of the movie. And imagine for a moment you could like step a, step off of uh, the timeline where the movie is, your own timeline where the movie is existing. Now you look back at where you're going off to the side. And all we're going to have to do is have you in touch with the creative part of yourself. So as you're aware of the creative part of yourself, comes up with creative solutions to all kinds of problems. Uh, and this, uh, I'm gonna give you a specific resource that you can apply to the way things happen the first time through. And this time when you think of the mentor, as we mentioned a little moment ago, whoever it is you think would do the thing that you don't do very well, who would do it really excellently? And we're going to have you talk to the creative part. And what the creative part is going to do is have you generate that character. And in a moment, I'm going to have you put that character in your movie basically in place of you. But for a moment, imagine that before we do this actual next part of the process, that you're able to the other mentor or other character in your place inside the same movie you ran before but you're going to be able to like look over his or her shoulder hmm. okay. you're going to be able to see what it is that that person does differently in the same situation you were having difficulty with make sense okay yeah. so as you do you go back into the into the movie into the last frame of that movie and i'm going to have you do this kind of thing, we call it a, a scramble technique. And it's pretty simple. You're just standing there in the last moment of that movie and you're gonna reverse the movie. You're gonna want the movie to go really fast backwards, as fast as you can, so fast enough that the colors begin to bleed together from frame to frame in the movie and the voices go backwards. So it sounds however it sounds. You're reversing the movie all the way back to the beginning just before that event ever even started yet. Got that? Yeah. Now you're right before that movie starts. The creative part, what I want you to do is give that younger you who is looking uh, over the shoulder of the mentor, uh, the resource of being the mentor there. You're going to put that character in, look over the shoulder, start your movie again from the beginning, run it all the way through the middle, all the way through the middle, all the way to the end, noticing what happens differently for the other person, where you're able to actually fully get an experience of what you can learn from what they're doing differently than what you did or would have been doing. And you run that movie all the way to the end until you're standing on the last frame again. Now just kind of look for yourself uh, you're standing at the last frame of the movie again, and you notice that that person did some things differently than what you did. Now, the idea is that behavior modeling, we're going to learn from what someone else did as if we could do it. So I'm going to have you run this three times all together. We got the first time through already, and you probably learned something that they did differently. Sometimes people tell me, well, it just didn't even start that way because they took a whole different approach to it. <laughs> they were just calm. Uh, there's all, a number of things that could have been differently, happening differently with the other person. Right. We're going to do it again. So you're standing at the last frame. We step out of the movie. Talk to your creative part again. Creative part, this time the resource I'm going to help you develop is <clears throat> not only that you're um, – having the other person do it, but you're actually going to be able to like go up inside. If you came up behind the other person who's your mentor, who does it differently, better than you do, and you could like fit into the, like a glove, you could fit your arms and your, like a, a suit, you could fit yourself up into the other person uh, and you're going to be them in this next run through it. So you're standing on the last frame of the movie. You run it really fast backwards again. The colors blend together. The voices go backwards, and you're all the way back to right before the event starts again. And this time, creative part, step up and give the mentor in the movie and step up into it. Be that mentor. 
seeing what they see to their belief systems and the way they move their body and the way their chest resonates and all of that. And you start the movie over again this time. Notice what you learn differently when you're not just looking over the shoulder of that person. You're being that person. In NLP, we call this second position. First position would be looking through your eyes. Second position is actually being the other person. You run the movie from the beginning all the way through. Noticing what happens differently, what you see differently, hear differently, feel differently, smell and taste differently, and how you're thinking about the strategies and what you're actually doing. And you run that movie all the way through to the end, standing on the last frame again. And as you do, find yourself standing on the last frame again. Notice that you've learned something uh, already that you didn't know you were going to learn today. <laughs> you've learned something about yourself, and you've learned something about how your mentor does it differently than you did. We're going to do it one more time. So whatever that learning is, let yourself have it. Take a deep breath. Pat yourself on the back. You're doing really great so far. <laughs> Let those resources sink into you. And that's exactly what's happening here. Just by allowing your brain to work in this way, you're literally creating new synaptic connections through your brain and nervous system that you weren't getting access to before. Now, as you've run that pattern and you've gotten those connections to happen, you now have in your own neurological system the learning from the other person. Now, truth of the matter is, that's how the other person did it, the mentor did it, and you may continue to do it just the way they did it, and there's probably something you would do even better than they do if you, uh, when you have their ability, when you have their patterns and their connections connected with yours. So create a part, you're going to give that new resource when we step back into the movie, run it backwards, frames run together, bleed together, the colors go together, the voices go backwards, you're all the way back at the beginning of that movie one more time. And as you are at that moment, creative art gives you the resource of having all of those neurological connections for ability and success in this situation and it's going to be you running the pattern this time having made the changes you've already made in your brain and nervous system and your neurological uh, pathways start the movie again this time run the movie as you with these new resources already intact noticing what happens differently as you run it from the beginning all the way through the middle, noticing all the things that are happening differently in your ability to create this result that you wanted to create, easily create now, run it from the middle all the way to the end, standing on the last frame again. When you get all the way to the end of the movie, standing on the last frame again, now notice for yourself that you have insights into what you can be doing differently and you notice how that feels. You want to anchor the state. And I, if you've done some hypnosis training, you probably know what an anchored state is. Let yourself feel it. It's pretty much all you got to do with it. If you want to go, yes, and click your fingers or whatever it is, it's a great way of anchoring. You, If I go, yes, I hear myself saying yes. I see myself with my fists pumping. I feel it as I do it. I've got a big auditory and kinetic anchor for being in this new state. So you want to mark out this new state because it's the secret of success with NLP patterns is that you just get to experience your life as if you've already achieved what you started out to achieve. Because as far as your brain and nervous system knows, you already have. So everything you do from this point forward from the present present out into that future present is happening automatically. You've already set yourself up to uh, experience those states, those pictures, those sounds, that mind talk, everything necessary for you to already experience what it's like. You're sorting differently in your world and you're sorting more successfully. And you're going to find that as you 
imagine something out in your future right now that would have probably not happened if we hadn't done this exercise and it's probably going to look like the same set of circumstances that happened before when you didn't do it well but now you bring this anchored state into that future event and as you do notice that you can bring a new ability a new feeling a new confidence a new way of thinking feeling breathing tasting smelling all those things into that possible likely future which is way more likely than it would have been before we started and that's basically the pattern I set up for you to do today I like it a lot because it's a really great example of NLP you're actually modeling somebody else's ability advanced behavior modeling uh, is what NLP is based on. Is that, I love that. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, Thank you, Bill. you're welcome. Awesome. Hey, if you're if you're listening to this uh, later, you know you're not listening live. Sometimes it's a little tough listening live, or even the first time through to catch everything. You know, I recommend you know close your eyes, sit down, lie down, and run through that because this is truly a very powerful technique. And I'll tell you, I've actually used this technique. When I first started, I talked about this before in the group. When I first started doing um, speaking gigs, uh, corporate speaking gigs about five years ago, I used this technique, and my mentor was Anthony Robbins. Yeah. It's Tony Robbins, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Ugh. And, uh, and, like, and like Bill said, you're not going to. You're not going to do it. You, you're not. Sometimes people will tell when I want to use this technique because it's also I have had tremendous results with my clients when I do this. I integrate mine, of course, into hypnosis. Um, in fact, I'll tell you, um, every hypnosis session I do has at least one NLP technique in it. I always integrate sure. something. Um, this one, I mean, I had a woman who wanted to become more outgoing. And we, you know, we, I, I just, I, I had her to think of somebody that she knew that was like that. She, she had a friend, a good friend, said, I want to be like her. And I tell you what, you know, a few weeks later we check in and she goes, it's, it's amazing. She goes, I, I feel so much more outgoing. Um, I'm having so much more fun. And all I have to do is just think about how my friend would have done this. And then it sort of becomes, it becomes you, it becomes integrated. Like you said, it becomes part of you. It's not, you're not just pretending to be somebody else. The great thing about running it the first, second, and then third time mm -hmm. is that it becomes your process. Right. Yeah. And you, don't, you don't even have to pick a perfect uh, model or mentor to work with. It can be just somebody that has some behavior that works really well, even if other parts of their life aren't perfect all the time. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> Yeah. yeah. And you know, the other thing, you know, I'll tell you what I've, what I've actually done too, is I will just imagine um, the future me. Yeah. And, and that, and that really works well for me. In fact, one of the things that I like to go through life uh, sometimes when I'm trying to make a decision, should I, should I do this or that? And I go, if I were a badass, this, I ask, what if I were a badass, what would I do? Right? <laughs> so it, uh, it becomes, it becomes so much easier for me to, to make that, that better choice. Um, so that's, that's what I do. Yeah, I want to tell you, you know? exactly. <laughs> so, um, the other, so the other thing too is, and you, I'm glad you you talked about this because. So I met Bill like about uh, about five years ago. I was going to his NLP meetups in Phoenix or in Scottsdale. Um, are you doing those online now? Or are they just are they halted for a while? I'm doing them on Zoom. Uh, them and, on if, Zoom. and I'll leave my email address if somebody wants to tune into those on Wednesday nights, seven to eight fifteen. PM, uh, I'd be happy to send you the Zoom link and you just click on it and you're on the chat with us. Hey, that's really cool because I haven't been able to go except when I'm in town. Um, so now I can actually join you more often. <laughs> it's, it's kind of fun because the COVID thing has done a lot of uh, kind of odd things that we wouldn't have thought of before. But now I get people from Taiwan and Spain right. and places that they couldn't easily attend a live meeting. So it actually yeah. has expanded some possibilities with it. Yeah. You know, um, I think, you know, and I'll, I got to tell everybody that's, if you're listening, um, Bill is just one of the most down to earth guys I've ever met. He's just, he has a way of um, explaining things that, you know, I've, I've studied NLP before, but he has a way of explaining things sometimes where I just go, Whoa, I didn't, I never, I never heard it presented that way. And it really makes it, makes it more clear. And, 
And I'm glad he talked about yes as an anchor because I've heard about anchors for years and years and years. And, and if you are if you do hypnosis, you probably use some sort of anchoring, especially for we oftentimes use it in non-smoking type stuff. We might touch somebody's palm or the top of their, their hand or we might, you know, have them do this kind of a thing, you know, holding the finger, these kind of things. That's right. But by going to Bill's training, the the one that the one that I love, the anchor that I love, is that anchor is it's it's that yes, and you so you've got the auditory, you've got the kinesthetic, you've got you see the the yes, and this is the one I teach to all my clients. And when I do a speaking gig and I talk about anchoring, I always mention Bill. I say this is from Bill Tom Thomason in, <laughs> in Scottsdale, but this is this is the anchoring technique that I use every single time. That's great. I started out with the health food business and. Uh, there were a lot of uh, kinesiology people that I ran into from time to time. They would mm -hmm. test vitamins in one way or another. But if you uh, look at a picture of a smiling face, it actually builds up your energy systems in your body. If you look at a unhappy face, it'll actually tear them down again. And going, yes, uh, is very powerful in the neurological system. So uh, pretty good idea. Practice doing that four or five times in a row as soon as you're able to get away from the screen. Yes. 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 Maybe yes. Before that. Exactly. yes. Awesome. Awesome. So um, we're, I'm going to put all Bill's information uh, in the comments. Um, and so it, his website and everything. He also has something he, he uh, we were talking earlier about this. You've got a training coming up. We do. We're starting actually tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. <laughs> all right. Uh October 2 through 4, it's three three-day weekends for an NLP uh, practitioner and coach certification training. Uh, and it'll go 9 o'clock to 4 p.m., 9, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. each day. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., uh, three Saturdays, three weekends in a row, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you'll actually, you can actually be certified. There's not particularly a prerequisite necessary for that. Uh, if you, especially if you've been studying a lot of hypnosis already, you're primed to be a great student to uh, get your practitioner training coming up right away. And there's, uh, since it is this time and we've got a, a few days of a special deal, the $19,977 course uh, will be five seventy seven if you go online and purchase Wait. like right now. Yeah, Wait. you got it. <laughs> That's not a typo? $577, like a quarter like, of the normal price. 25%. Wow. Okay. Um, it might be worth calling in sick tomorrow for it, people. If you <laughs> if you want to sign up for it, uh, I do apologize. You know, I didn't I didn't um, I didn't know this training was coming up, or, or we would have I would have um, introduced them to you late, uh, earlier. Um, mm -hmm. I know it's kind of short notice, but um, if you can do it, if you can't do it this time, Bill, are you going to be doing it anytime? Yeah, we'll, in the we'll continue to do these. It'll be the first time we've done it online on a Zoom meeting. Okay. Cool. And uh, we will continue to do the live trainings and the Zoom trainings both. So uh, we, we try to do about three of these practitioner trainings a year. Then there's a master practitioner of NLP and a trainer's training of NLP. So uh, those are all similar length courses, uh, figure more or less 10 days. <laughs> wow. Um yeah, that's amazing. I uh, we didn't talk about the cost before. I'm I'm that's a that's a really fantastic price. I mean, NLP training is typically very expensive, <laughs> yeah. um, and it's you're getting a lot. It's not that it's it's not justified, but you're you are getting a lot. But it's it's it is typically pretty expensive. As is hypnosis training. Um, has anything worthwhile? So that's that's amazing. Five seventy seven. If you can get that, that's great. Either way, I'm going to put his information down below. Stay in touch. Uh, maybe I'll see you at one of his uh, upcoming uh, meetups. <laughs> all right. That Look sounds good. To meeting all of you. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it, again, if you're a um, hypnosis practitioner, um, NLP, they go hand in hand. And, and like I said, I mean, uh, I, I learned hypnosis first. I learned NLP later. And they really do. They work well together. And every single hypnosis session I do, has at least one NLP technique. Uh, and I'm talking about the kind of the, 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 the mental exercises. Of course, we're always using language patterns and things like that that we learn, you know, in NLP. Um, that just goes without saying. 
a lot of how NLP got developed was from uh, uh, Milton Erickson, and I'm sure you've heard his name, but he was a medical doctor here in Phoenix and uh, got very fascinated with hypnosis. And we learned a lot of the language patterns from him. And that be began to be woven into the the way that we do what we do with, and it's also the way you do what you do with hypnosis as well. So what Milton brought to us is the waking hypnosis. You don't always have to be in a closed eye relaxation trance to be yeah. taking suggestions in. And within it, with the practitioner training, we're actually wanting to expand your filters so that you can take in way more information, accelerate your ability to get information, to integrate patterns and skills, uh, and we can do it. They're going to be really packed in full days, and this, with the three three-day weekends, you get a little time to practice and study in between sessions that way. That's good because, you know, I'll tell you, when I uh, when I did my practitioner training, it was, uh, I think it was like seven or eight days in a row, nine to five, every yeah. single day, and it was, by the third day, I was wiped out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I needed a break. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Um, if you're watching this now, if you're in the group, the Launch Your Hypnosis Career Now group, uh, happy you're here. If you're not, please join the group. And as always, you know, as I always say, for any of the trainers that, that appear in this group, um, I, I, if I endorse them, um, then you get a discount on my programs too. So if you if you sign up for Bill's program now or later, 25% off any of mine. So I've got my Launch Your Hypnosis Career a course coming up, the nine week program. If you've been looking at that, you get it for 125 bucks off. So um, just let me know if you, if you sign up for his class, his uh, training, Bill, it was great to talk to you again. Yeah, you too. Thanks for inviting me on. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching everybody. If you have questions, comments, concerns, type them uh, down below and I will make sure that Bill uh, gets to see them. Be well. Thanks. Have fun. Bye. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Bill. Take care. And hey out there, you take care, be well, be awesome. Excellent.